Emulsion transfer is the process of removing and transferring the image layer from a Polaroid with the help of some hot water. Let me show you how it's done. With emulsion transfer, you're going to need the following items. You'll need a hot water source. In this case, I'm using an electric tea kettle. You'll need a thermometer that can read the right temperature range, 160 degrees. You'll need two trays, a tray for the hot water and a tray for the cold water. Also, with the cold water, you're going to need a sheet of clear mylar or acetate. You'll also need a squeegee, a soft rubber roller, a razor blade or scissors, and contact paper. This is the type of material that's used to coat shelves and cover books found in department stores. With emulsion transfer, you need to work with Polar Color ER. The various formats would be type 809 for 8x10, type 59 or 559 for 4x5, and type 669 for 3 and a quarter by 4 and a quarter. The first thing we need is a Polar Color ER print. And the first step is to actually coat the back side of the print with a waterproof material. The easiest way to apply the contact paper is to cut a slightly oversized sheet compared to the size print that you're working with. Peel back about two inches of the backing and actually tape the print to the countertop. I'll then take my squeegee, pull back on the backing, and actually laminate that to the back of the print, like so. Now there is an emulsion along the white border of the print, and I recommend that if it's the first time out for you to try an emulsion transfer, trim the white border off. It's a little bit difficult to remove. But here's the first part of the creative process because you're not locked into just cutting out a square picture, even though I will. You can cut out a circle, an oval, a freeform shape. In fact, what I like to do a lot of times is to take several elements from several pictures and then montage them onto one piece of paper. With this process, you'll see that really creativity is up to the imagination. Now that I have the white border removed, we need to prepare the water. I've heated up the water to a temperature of 175 degrees. This is tap water. I need it to be 160 degrees in the tray so I know the water is going to cool down once it hits the cold tray. We need to have the water temperature at 160 and we need to have the timer set for four minutes. I'm going to take the print and then quickly immerse it into the tray of hot water, set the timer, and then rock during those four minutes. And here we are, rocking. So after several minutes, you'll notice that there may be a bubbling occur along the surface of the print. This is perfectly normal and this signifies that the emulsion is beginning to release from the paper underneath. Now there's no need to keep the temperature at 160. In fact, part of the process is to allow that water to cool down. Now at the end of the four minutes, I'll take my thermometer and place it under the surface of the print. Lift the print out from the hot water and then take the print and transfer it over to the tray of cold water like so. Then the first step is to very lightly push the emulsion in around all four edges and that's just to release the emulsion from the surface of the print underneath. And then I'll take two of the corners and then carefully pull that down over itself reversing the image. This is akin to pulling down a bed sheet at the end of the night. I'm making sure that this separation point is under the surface of the water at all times to prevent sticking. Once I'm about halfway, I'll take the emulsion, hold it down with one hand, and then slowly pull the print out from underneath. And then we'll discard this paper substrate. Now we have the emulsion floating in the water. 
Now we do have this sheet of clear mylar underneath. And to show you why, the emulsion is a little weak and you can do things like a tadpole transfer. We'll just take two of the corners, clamp it onto the acetate, and then dunk the acetate in and out to stretch out the image. But here's the first part of the creative process where we actually can use the water to create all sorts of manipulations. You can dunk it in and out, create folds and creases. Move it around. So we can take this emulsion, push it around, pull it, actually pick it up and pull it over itself. And if something happens that you're not happy with, then it's a simple matter to take the acetate with the emulsion, place it back into the tray of water, hold on to two of the corners, place it in and dunk it out to stretch it out again. And then we can maneuver it and position it over again. I can actually take the emulsion and pull it and rip it. Push it and tug it. We can transform it into other objects. And prior to placing the emulsion onto the watercolor paper, take the paper, quickly run it underneath the surface of the water to create a lubricating layer. And then to take the emulsion, I'll now flip it over, center it onto the paper, press down one corner, and then slowly peel it back. And we'll use this acetate again for the next transfer. At this point, I can push and pull. If something happens that you're not quite happy with, it's a simple matter to take the paper, dunk it into the tray, stretch it out, and begin again. Once you have the emulsion in the position that you're looking for, Take your soft rubber roller, gently place it onto the transfer using absolutely no pressure, just the weight of the roller, work from the inside out, and push out the excess water and the air bubbles. Once you have the excess water and the air bubbles removed, then slowly increase pressure, still working from the inside out, and begin the final lamination of the emulsion to the material. Watch the creases in the folds. And when you see those flatten out, you're done. And there you have it, an emulsion transfer. I'll allow it to dry and I'll finish it with pastels, inks, watercolors, really anything I have on hand. I'll flatten it in a dry mount press and as an optional step, I'll finish it with a photo grade lacquer. Let's go over some of the different substrates that can be used for an emulsion transfer. It's a bit wider than it is with image transfer. For example, you can use canvas board and actually show this, the texture of the canvas underneath. In this case, the image was stretched out for photographic quality. You can use ceramic tile. You can use glass. So you have some rather fragile material, so let's get something a little stronger. Metal. You can place the emulsion on wood. Now where the emulsion is transparent, it takes on the characteristics of the material underneath. In this case, a dark wood yields a dark moody transfer. A lighter wood would be a lighter transfer. The real fun begins when you place the emulsion on three-dimensional objects.